All righty. We are live. Welcome to another Thursday's Top Tips in Real Estate. And every week we come to you with some local professionals who share with you their top tips in real estate. And we also have a topic that we talk about each week. And this week, our topic is common challenges and their solutions. So there's so many different things going on in the real estate industry. There are so many things that could go bump in the night and, and mess up. But we are the professionals that you work with are the ones that help you through that and guide you with those solutions. So we are here to share those with you today with these professionals. And I'm going to start it off with Katie. So Katie, you are a very what? <laughs> You're muted. Okay. I was trying to share the stream, Lucy. Oh. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Share, share the I'll stream. Share it in a second. Uh, <laughs> so, hi. Hello again. Thank you, Lucy. My name is Katie Bourgeois with the Bourgeois Real Estate Group. Um, we are coming, to, I'm coming to you live from my world headquarters in Palm City, Florida. Um, so, talking about the uh, challenges in real estate, um, I was going to uh, share my screen and identify a couple of um, challenges that we see on a regular basis. I'm going to share my screen. Tell me if you can see it. I lost everybody. I, you see it? Yes? Okay. Yes. Um, so uh, our 14 realtors serve uh, North Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, and River counties. And in the real estate process, we use the as-is purchase contract, which you see on your screen. So I mention this because I want to address a really common challenge in the buying and selling of a home. It's the home inspection, the dreaded results of the home inspection or anticipated results of the home inspection. Um, and I wanted to, you know, kind of talk about a little bit um, the, the concept of pass and fail. There really is no pass or fail for a home inspection. Uh, the home inspection is a snapshot of the current condition of the property according to that person that did the report. So using the as-is contract, there really is no obligation on the part of the seller to make any repairs or to agree to any sort of credits for future repairs um, based on that report and based on the uh, as-is residential contract for purchase. So there, you know, wherever there's a rule, there's always an exception to the rule. And I um, like to bring in, you know, the, the mortgage lenders on, um, you know, how the FHA and VA, uh, you know, programs influence, you know, some of those um, challenges that we see. But if you are buying a home without an FHA or VA program, you're, you're using conventional financing or even cash, um, there is no obligation for the seller to make any repairs and a lot of them you know sometimes don't have the appetite for cosmetic uh condition complaints so um you know this this kind of highlights the importance of working with a local real estate expert um that can help identify these issues ahead of time um you know versus those cosmetic complaints that we're talking about so the, the true issues may be related to specifically FHA and VA financing, which we've talked about before is very commonly wood rot, uh, broken windows and doors uh, that don't lock, or maybe a um, water heater that isn't functioning appropriately. Um, and uh, with that, open it up to the, I would say, you know, whoever has a, a, a any additional insight on that. <laughs> but I, would, I thought that that is, I mean, it really is a, a very common challenge that we are, we are seeing currently. You know, there's so many buyers in the market. There's very low inventory for them to choose from. And when they come across a home inspection that doesn't quite uh, meet what we thought the condition of the property was, you know, we've, we've got to deal with it. So going into the situation with, you know, expectations set accordingly, um, it's very helpful knowing what you're working with and, and how to move forward. Awesome. Definitely a great, great challenge to add in there. <laughs> All, right. All right. So then next we have up Peter. So I will highlight your screen. Hey guys, Peter Negron here from the Hunt Group, powered by Keller Williams, right there. And we're going to talk about some of the common things that I see 
has issues and let me just share my screen right now. So common challenges and solutions. <clears throat> Quite honestly, <clears throat> one of these three things are on just about everyone's list. So please listen carefully because Honestly, you do want to take the advice of your real estate professional at all times. So number one, going out of sequence without the advice of your realtor. Now, what I mean by that is we know what it's going to take to get you to the closing table. As a team, along with your lender and your title service provider, we are all going to be just as motivated as you are to get you to the closing table and make sure that you're there without any issues. So please don't try to go and get an inspector out to the home before you've closed on your contract or or some or the contract has gone bilateral there, there's so many different things that we can tell you to do at the right time but you just have to really sit and listen to our conversations because quite honestly a lot of the problems that we have are just people being too anxious now we understand that you're really ready to get into a new home and you might have found the home that you love but we still have to abide by every one of our sequences so that we can make sure to get you to the closing table at the right time. Now, number two is falling in love with living the dream. And that kind of coincides with uh, going ahead and going out of sequence. So if you just fall in love with a home that you've been looking at realtor.com or something like that, for before you even think about speaking to a lender, before you even think about still speaking to a real estate professional, you're selling yourself a lie. So just really try to link up with a realtor, try to link up with a lender, because honestly, they're going to guide your path and they're going to put you in the best possible home that you can get without you having to worry about breaking the bank, without you having to worry about any issues later on down the road. And also, we want to make sure to put you in front of homes that you qualify for. So really just open up and, and listen to your uh, real estate professional because there's there's certain things that I, we all know that you want. We all know that you have to have, but we can also do that within looking in what you can afford. So please just reach out to us. And honestly, we're gonna guide you to the right paths. And last but not least is not adhering to the CC diet. And what I mean by that is you are under contract, you're speaking with a lender, everything is going well, but you decide that you want to go out and purchase yourself a new boat to go with your new house. Honestly, the credit card diet is the perfect way to avoid any kind of problems at the closing table. If you make sure that you keep your credit the way you came into your deal, you're going to be in a very safe place. But if you start living outside your means before you get into that home, you could have an issue. Now, I'm going to share another screen. So the average American in 2019, the average American has about $6,192 in just credit card debt. And that's coming from Magnify Money by Lending Tree. Now that's the average. So if you're below that, that doesn't mean you're safe. And if you're above that, you should probably start thinking about possibly getting those down to that average or much under that average. Now, I'm going to tell you firsthand, if you're a lender, what you want to see is zero on those balances, but not all of us can live like that. So try to get those balances down and practice the credit card diet, you know, get yourself away from using credit to do your everyday expenses. And honestly, once you get on that page, the rest of the process will be cake for you, but please get in touch with your lender, get in touch with your real estate professional and let them guide you so that you can have success in your transaction. Awesome, great information. <laughs> and then we are going to go to the lending side of things. So Carol, you are up next. Oh, look at that foam finger time. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Goals here with Gateway Mortgage. Um, I'm gonna segue a little bit about, um, am I, can you hear me? Yes. I keep saying unmute myself. Um, what Peter just said kind of is what I'm going to talk about in my challenge um, is debt to income ratio 
after I've pre-qualified your customer to go out and look for that home. This happens all the time. And it could be because they went out and bought something or it could be um, the insurance is coming in higher than we anticipated. The property taxes are higher than we anticipated. There are several factors. When we qualify your customers, we're kind of taking an idea of, okay, they want to be in this price range, but in order to be in this price range, they have to fall into these categories. And sometimes I call it like threading a needle because they want to buy that $200,000 house, but the only way they can buy that $200,000 house is if the taxes are, let's say, $3,000. And then they go and find the $200,000 house with $4,000 taxes. So what do we do when this happens? Well, we can give them a lower interest rate. That's one way. Or we can have them pay off some debt to qualify and bring that ratio back down. That's some of the things. Or we can just switch up programs and get them into a program where they can go with that higher ratio. So that's kind of a little bit more information on what Peter was talking about. Um, and then another challenge that came up while I was thinking about this, because I'm actually having this challenge right now, is condo project approvals. Now, typically, we here at Gateway approve condo projects with in-house, and it's usually a one-day process. And with the down payment assistance program that we use here in the state of Florida, there is only one lender that services these loans, and this particular lender when you're buying a condo using the down payment assistance program and you're putting only 3% down, they want to approve the condo. So that's created a challenge for me that I'm dealing with right now. And I have to let my buyers, my sellers, and my realtors know that this is out of my control. There's nothing I can do about it. And I'm at their mercy. We're all at their mercy. And they take, they're taking two weeks to do this, whereas I normally take one day. It's crazy, but that's a challenge that we have to overcome. And it is what it is, but I like to make sure that all parties are aware of any challenges the minute they come up. I'm not going to sandbag it and drop it off later when, oh, I thought it was going to get fixed and it didn't. I'm going to let you know right away we have an issue that we need to take care of and all, all parties need to be aware of it. So those are some of the challenges that I see. And I will segue to Dana. Awesome. Dana, you're up. <laughs> Thank you. This is Dana Menenti from Guaranteed Rate Affinity. Um, they've said everything. I don't have anything left to say. No, just kidding. Um, so one thing that we have kind of touched on is um, document collection. So the importance of getting all the documents up front um, the loan process is where you get your initial pre-approval. And based on that information, we collect documents and we prepare you for the underwriter. So if we wait until the underwriter reviews it and says, I need a whole list of documents, then there is a chance that something can come up. Let's say you have a bank statement and on your bank statement, you just deposited um, $10,000 in cash. Well, that cash deposit is something that we would have a, a lot of questions about. So when we are preparing your loan to be seen by the underwriter, it is a best practice to provide all of the supporting documents up front so that nothing can come up at the 11th hour when we're trying to get a clear to close. So you go into underwriting for an initial review. And then once you come out of an initial review, you're approved. And then you go back in for the final review, clear to close. That final clear to close review, that is the most critical. And that's what everybody's waiting on. The, three favorite letters of everybody in the real estate industry. No, that's actually two letters, but clear to close, CTC. Once we get that, that everybody's happy, people are celebrating, dancing in the streets. We, we hold our breath until that happens. So it is very important to um, gather as many documents as possible when you are trying to get pre-approved 
Um, the more documents that you can provide, the smoother the process will be and the less surprises and issues at the end. That's all I have to say. Great, thank you for that addition, Dana. All right, next we've got Cody. So I'm spotlighting your video, Cody, and you're up. Hello, hello, this is Cody with Bourgeois Real Estate Group. I'm at home, but we're based in Palm City. Let me share my screen here. Can you guys see it? Um, not yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. All right, so, oh, wrong one, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, the challenges that I have come across lately, uh, first one is keeping up with technology Apologize for the grants being cut here. Um, so there is so much uh, to learn and so much to keep up with uh, in this changing time with like social media and the meetings now with Zoom. Um, it's almost like you have to learn to use all of it. Uh, once you have learned to use all of it, um, it, it seems it, it tends to become easier, uh, and you're easier to find for your customers. So, um, I mean, at this point, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, you know, Google listings, uh, now it's alignable. Uh, we got the zoom meetings. There are all kinds of programs, uh, you know, to, to maintain your customer base, send out you know flyers and email blasts and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's it's a challenge to keep up with all of it, but it's it's all it's a needed uh, process in this in this new environment that we're in. Um, and then there is you know facing increased competition from non-traditional market participants. I have so many people who come to me with properties that they found on Zumper or Zillow or Realtor.com or Redfin or uh, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. And I have to, you know, always show them that if they're not getting information from us and the MLS, then chances are it's not correct. There are so many that haven't been updated, so many scams. Um, it's just crazy. I mean, there's 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 houses that claim to be for rent um, that were sold ten years ago. Um, you know, there's houses that claim to be for sale that uh, are being rented right now. Um, there are houses that don't exist, and um, I even had a client who had a person send them, email them a contract to lease on a house that didn't exist. So if it wasn't for me doing the research and finding this information, they probably would have been out about $3,000. So um, that is why you all need a realtor. <laughs> um, and then the last one here is uh, you know, concerns over housing affordability. I can kind of thank Dana, our lovely Dana here for kind of showing me this thing. Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a professional, you have to know Know your crowd. Know your um, your professional team, um, because everybody's situations are different. Everybody's financial situations are different, and you know, like with lenders, for instance, you know, different lenders can offer uh, different options for people. So um, you have to know your crowd, know who you're dealing with, and that way you know better how to deal with your customers. And that is my rant for the day. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Cody. So we are going to, I've brought in the big guns when it comes to title insurance to help give you some common challenges. My boss, Michelle Chart of Aero Title is going to share with us some common title issues or common challenges and solutions that we face here in the title industry. So Michelle, 
take the floor. I'm spotlighting your video now. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Oh my gosh. I never got to get on any of these. I'm like, I said to Lucy, I got a few minutes today. I want to get on. I want to talk to people and, and let them know we are strong right now, but we are running into a few challenges. And I just wanted to pop on and, and give you a couple ideas of the things we are running into. And Carol, I think, you know, you're probably, Carol and Dana are probably seeing this a lot. Um, we're having problems getting pay mortgage payoffs. Yeah, I know, right? What? I, I, I mean, the most common banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, we're not having too many problems getting payoffs from them because it's like an automated system. But man, are we having problems getting payoffs? It's taking days, even weeks to get payoffs. Even with, even with written authorization, we even get on three-way calls with the customers. I mean, we start working on the payoffs right away as soon as we get a contract, simply because they're taking so long. So that's a pretty big one for us right now. Um, another thing we're finding, uh, we kind of get these trends in title um, over the years. Sometimes we'll have problems with deeds being prepared wrong. Sometimes we'll have problems with, you know, misspellings of names, things like that. Right now, the biggest problem we're having is uh, we're finding a lot of people have prepared their own deeds because they're selling it to family or giving it to family and the deed is like completely wrong. <laughs> the legal description's wrong, the names are wrong, <laughs> there's no marital status. Um, so that seems to be a big, big one. Another thing too is someone dies and they don't record the death certificate. So a really common issue that people don't know is that just because the state files a death certificate doesn't mean it's filed in the public records. So when we're calling people for, you know, their parents' death certificate or their brother or whatever, they're saying, well, we filed that. Well, you filed it with the state. You didn't file it with the county. So that's a, a big common one. In fact, we have had two now where the person died before 2009. And if you die, if it's a person who died before 2009, we actually have to go to Tallahassee for it online. We can't get it at the local health department. So those are two big ones right now for us. We're hoping, we're hoping things improve a little bit better on that. Uh, we're, Lucy and I are doing a lot of education on our YouTube channel to explain you know, how title works and the you know, things that are supposed to be right and everything. Um, and we're hoping that gets spread around a little bit because we, we want to educate people. We want them to know what they're doing if they're trying to do documents themselves. In the long run, it winds up costing them more money than just getting a professional to do it for them. So, so that's where we're at. How's everybody doing? Amen, sister. Great to see you. <laughs> you think those payoff issues are COVID related with staff being like working remotely and maybe even staff being sick? I, Carol, I do think it's a combination of that. Um, we have a couple of lenders right now that we've been dealing with where they're still all working out of their homes. Yeah, I have no idea what state this particular call center is in, obviously, but um, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, another part of it actually is people are on forbearance. Oh, yeah. So if they're on forbearance due to COVID, um, it's not as easy to get payoffs because that interest is accruing. And it's almost like back in the day when we had a lot of, you know, short sales and foreclosures and we had to wait weeks for payoffs. And manually calculate. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think it's a combination of those things. Yes, I do. I do believe that. So what can people do to avoid these situations? I think the easiest thing to tell your customers is um, help us. We need to like get right on the phone with these banks right away on a three-way call um, and we've actually even had to have the customer call them and tell them to fax us the payoff. We don't like to do that, but as long as we have proof it didn't come from the customer, we see it's coming from directly from the bank, then we haven't had uh, too much issue there. But there are a couple of lenders that are really, um, I hate to, you know, I'm not, I'm not a name name person, but I'm just gonna throw them under the bus right now. Freedom Mortgage and New Res are our problem children right now. They just will not give us payoffs. 
we've done written authorization, we've called, we've done three-way call, they just won't do it. They Every time we call, they say, oh, well, we never got your written authorization, even though it's been faxed and emailed multiple times. My so mortgage is with freedom, they suck. Just huh? My mortgage is with freedom and they're not the best to deal with. They're very antiquated, I had to say. Which is yeah. why it's so important to use a local lender. Well, my, we're not responsible. Wow. Like when we get a mortgage, mine was with Bank of America and sold to Freedom. So you're, you're, you know, you're at the mercy of whoever the lender sells your. Unfortunately, insurance. unfortunately, that is true. So yeah. we just have to. We just ask people to be. At this point, patient. honestly, we yeah. ask people to be patient with us. Yeah. Um, so far, I haven't had to ask for an extension on a closing due to a payoff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the whole point of setting expectations like when something like when one of these challenges comes up we need to set expectations with all parties right away instead of pretending that it might just resolve itself in the meantime and then you wait 10 days and like oh guess what it didn't get resolved right and in the meantime you know we've been working you know we we are very much you know we don't stay in the problem me right. and my staff, we don't stay in the problem. We want to get to a solution right away. That's just our personalities. We're all like that. Mm-hmm. And we don't like to call the customer and constantly, you know, we're having a problem. We're having a problem. And we don't want to tell the realtor that. So we want you guys to know we are working tirelessly to make sure this stuff gets done. And it may not seem it because we're not telling you, but if we called you or emailed you every time, we had to make that call or email, you would be like, oh my God, she's calling me again. I can't talk to her. <laughs> I just can't talk to her. So it, it's, it's, it's been a challenge for us. It really has. And I think the biggest thing, like you said, Carol, is to set the expectation that, that this is something that's going to be a little bit of an issue. We need to work through it. We need help. We need people to call us back. Call us back. If we call your customer and they're not calling us back, they need to call us back. <laughs> and I brought that up as well in previous weeks where you know communication is so important yeah. in the real estate transaction on every everyone's part but as a client as well you know if you are buying or selling a home we know it's overwhelming we know yeah. that there are million and one things going through your head but we have to have that open communication line or else yeah. everybody can't do their job and we're not going to call you we're not just going to call we won't call right. you unless we really need to call right. you. i agree and then once you have that challenge and you've overcome that challenge that you know the next deal that comes along that has the same challenge, you know, right then I'm going to set those expectations. So now right. everybody knows with the down payment assistance, if you've got a condo, it isn't going to close in a short amount of time. Right. Just that's right. just the way it is. And, and, you know, I've been in this business long enough to remember in here in Florida when underwriting turn times were like a month. Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm in 24 hours still. It's like, okay. You know, that reminds well, me too of it. Uh, back then, you know, so we're, in, we're dealing with something that's unknown to everybody right now. Totally. Yeah. And, and we don't know, like I said, it could be the fact that we're working at home or it could be that that person in that department is sick and we don't have somebody that does the same job the same way, you know, so right. If we all just need to have a little bit of patience, we will get through this because it's not permanent. It's just temporary. Exactly. Um, I just, that made me just think of one more thing since you're talking about how people are out sick or whatever. Um, another challenge we're having is condo and, and HOA associations getting the yes. interviews done. So the certificates of approval, those are also taking a lot longer because that's all done in house with not necessarily with the management company. Right. So you got, you got to get with the president or the vice president or some of the board members to be interviewed and to get that approval signed. And that's becoming a, a somewhat of a challenge as well. I think we're over the hump on that a little bit, but in the beginning when COVID first hit Florida, it was like not, nothing was getting done, nothing. So we're that's coming a little bit better, but we're still even having challenges with that. Yeah, agreed. So, well, it's thank tough you for the- those, um, those HOAs work nine to 12, Monday and Friday. And then yep. sometimes they get like a two hour lunch. It's like, when are they there? And then with COVID, forget it. Oh, I, need that I, <laughs> I need, I need that job. I need, I need that job. That's the challenge I got with Newport Isles. Like their hours are like, I, I, it's crazy. Like two or three hours one day, five hours the next, eight hours the next, like, really? Oh, we still love them. <laughs> 
Get the yeah. job done. It's all good. We'll get through it. Oh, the funny thing is, is that people complain about the management companies. Obviously, you know, it's not. Oh, yeah. The time job. So then that's just another thing to set expectations, especially when you're buying a condo or a townhome. These are the expectations up front, whether it's the realtor or the lender, we're, you know, or title, you know, because there's some things you got to have that we don't need on a townhouse. And it's like, we're not in control. Somebody else is in control. Feel free to call them yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's funny because, you know, I get the days of the, of the, of the three day closing are over. I mean, my yeah. personal best is two days. I've done closings in less than two days, Wow. but you know, we get a contract in it's cash. Everybody's here. Everybody's cooperating. We get the title search back and there's a whole list of things we have to get before we can close. So even the ones we think are going to be so easy, don't wind up being as easy as we were hoping. Yeah. But, uh, but we get through it. I have a great staff. My, all my staff are fantastic. Um, Jamie has started doing closings a few months ago and man, she is kicking it. She is kicking it. She's my bulldog. When I need something, I thought I was the bulldog in the office. No, no, it's Jamie. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, with real estate, there's so much going on in the whole process, but having that great team behind you, that's going to work to make sure that everything gets done. That's the goal. And we've, we've talked about that so many different times in different weeks. Um, And to those of you who are watching this, you know, on Facebook and whatever it might be, or YouTube, um, there are a lot of different challenges, but we're here. We are your local team to help you. And any of the professionals that come on here every week, they are the ones who are putting that extra time into making sure that you guys are educated on what's going on and what's going on with the process and we will help guide you whether it be title mortgage or on the realtor side so we are here to help you guys um i do want to mention because we did have a realtor who was supposed to come on earlier and she had one thing that she wanted to mention that she had prepared and i thought it was a really good one and she said that her most common challenge that she experienced is on the buyer's side that they have this belief system that they can't change their situation right now um, especially with first time home buyers or whatever the situation might be with their credit. So I kind of want to open that up to everybody else and see if anybody has some suggestions on, you know, what those solutions could be. Um, she, her, I'll do very briefly what she had mentioned her solution was, is that the conversation is free to have a, with a realtor. So, you know, the conversation is free talk with one, just see what the options are. But I'll go ahead and open the floor to anybody who kind of wants to add on to that um, specific common challenge. Well, honestly, if you really think about it, because of what you just said, Lucy, that's the main reason to believe your realtor. I mean, they are not getting paid until they actually get you to the closing table. You have to understand that, you know, we, we, we've gone back and we've done, done all the schooling and we, you know, keep ourselves up to date on everything that we need to know information wise and, you know, what's going on locally, just so that we can prepare people to purchase or sell homes. So please just reach out everything, every conversation that we have until we have a conversation at the closing table is free. This is true. That's a great point to make. Um, does anything, anybody else have anything to chime in? Yeah. I just want to say one thing. When we have Fizbo's walk in here, we all cringe. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know that now. I have so much respect for realtors. You have no idea. We try. We try so hard when they walk in here. Please call a realtor. We'll give you a whole list of people, recommendations that we, we know. And it's so hard to get Fisbos to, to go with a real, and I don't know why that is. They just think they can do it and they can't. For those of you who are watching and don't know what a Fisbo is, it means for sale by owner. They know it all. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, you know, know, sorry Lucy, I always forget some people don't know the lingo. <laughs> yeah, but the, the best part about that, Michelle, also is you can tell them that most of the realtors, if they call anyone on that list, we want to help them. We don't want to just get a check. We want to make sure that they're protected because we might be able to bring them a buyer and we want our buyer to be protected as well from their, from, from them not knowing what they don't know, which yeah. is the entire process. Honestly. That's you- why everyone here went to school, right? 
<laughs> to like to learn all of the different processes and that's what we talk about every week about how many different th- we're talking about today the challenges that you could go through and if you're doing that by yourself and you're not in the real estate industry every day there first of all nobody knows everything in real estate not one person knows every single thing in real estate and th- having a team of professionals who under that are from different backgrounds and no different things like that's where all of that value comes from and you know if we as professionals in this every single day don't know everything imagine what it is being a homeowner and you you're not in the industry and you're trying to sell your own home there's so many things that you're missing mm-hmm. along the way and common mistakes that could happen that you're not meaning to happen and nobody it wants mistakes to happen and we're nobody's nobody's expecting those mistakes to happen but they happen and we're all human and you're not expected to know you, I mean why would you I, I have a bell ringer for you guys anybody got a bell handy well I got a bell ringer for everybody hang on, hang on. <laughs> I knew it I knew that was gonna happen <laughs> so uh on on, on average, FISBOs commonly get less for their home than if they're working with real estate professionals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, for the 6% that you're paying in commissions, you're probably losing about 15% on your home price. Yep. So just think about it. Wow. Do, do, you want, do you want that 9% more on your home or do you not want that 9%? You can do it by yourself. You can, it can be done. But on top of all of everything that they've already said, you'll also get less for your house. How do you feel about that? Uh, and listen, imagine imagine dealing with a former realtor from another area who has unrealistic expectations. <laughs> I want to get $50,000 less for the house, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, Peter, that's a really good way to t- to explain it to people. I never even because I want to tell them it's not saving you money, and I I couldn't quite wrap my head around. Okay, how am I going to explain it to people to make them understand you're not saving yourself money? But that's a very good point, and I didn't know that those numbers existed. So thank you for that. There are some, there are some marketing materials and probably some information sheets between Peter, Katie, Cody. Uh, Alana on this call, we all have these like infographics that show the for sale by owner right. how much, what they, you know, a, a, a kind of an idea of what they're, they're missing out on as far as liability, but they don't know. And then the, the cost difference between, you know, paying an attorney to do all of this is going to cost you way probably more than a commission. And then the market value that they're missing because they don't have access to the information that we do and the expert knowledge in the marketplace to tell them what the, the highest and best uh, price could be for that property and help them negotiate it to a successful close. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, think about, think about it this way. We're not just talking about commissions here. We're talking about the unforeseen issues that could happen during your process. So you could be walking into this thinking that you're saving a boatload of money and then all of a sudden you're having to pay all types of fees that you had no clue to and your lawyer is just going to present them to you and you're going to have to accept it at that point. I think that's what the, the biggest problem is, is that they feel like they're just going to, you know, pay maybe a couple hundred dollars on, a, on, on transfers or whatever, not realizing what actually is involved. So they, you know, they, they, they're not being realistic about what it takes. So and they think that they're saving a bunch of money by blocking a realtor out. So we're, Absolutely. we're, working, with, we're oh. working with lawyers, we're working with title, we're working with lenders. So before you spend all that money, at least open up that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, interview them. I mean, I, I, I feel like the where the issue comes from is people who have been burned by realtors or the situation before, which is understandable. We know that not everybody knows, you know, everything and that there are bad situations that happen out there. You know, not everything is not everyone's going to be a rock star. Right. I mean, it's, it's OK, but you can't blame the entire rest of the realtors on one bad experience. You just can't. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, I I understand like having a bad taste in your mouth about something, but it's just, it's not, it's not the right way to go about it. And just like you said, all the money that you're, um, you're going to be gaining if you just use a real 
killed her. But also a lot of, and I know we've mentioned this in other calls as well, is that a lot of people don't understand that with a buying, like if you're buying, you're not even paying for the realtor. <laughs> You're not even paying for the realtor if you are on the buying side. It is the seller who is paying for the realtor. And I have one of my mom's friends, like she was in this whole situation and she was dead set on finding her own home. And I was like, just call a realtor. I was like, it's free. And like, it could not, she could not, could not take it for some reason like free just could not compute I don't know but she just didn't want to do it and she just did it on her own and like she ended up in kind of a bad situation because she didn't she's paying way more than she should now and like renting like a short-term rental it's just just use just at least have a conversation you know you, you are not bounded by anything if you just have a conversation conversation is going to kill you that that's all I want to say <laughs> so I think we've, we've uh, really brought up some great topics today. And, you know, there are a lot of, there's way more, you know, challenges that can come up in the whole real estate process, but we have highlighted a, a couple of the main ones that have come up and giving you those solutions to those ones. Um, and so now we're going to go into the segment where everyone gives their number one top tip of the week um, for everybody watching out there. So I'm going to go back to Katie. What is your top tip of the week? Katie Bourgeois, the Bourgeois Real Estate Group says, please hire a local expert. Talk to a couple <laughs> people and hire a local expert. That is the tip that I'm given every week. And if, you know, I think the, the rationale for that this week is very applicable that we can identify the most common challenges and get ahead of it. We have a team of professionals, all these people on the call are dedicated individuals, full-time real estate professionals, and then some who can, you know, get the job done. So please call, call a realtor first and make sure that that person is a local expert and, and knows what they're talking about. Absolutely. All right. Next is Peter. Hey guys, Peter Negron here from the Hunt Group, powered by Keller Williams. Uh, my top tip really is don't assume that we're going to all be the same person that somebody had a negative conversation about. You know, we we all have different personalities, just like there's a good person in every situation, there's a good realtor and a bad realtor in every situation. Like you can't expect that somebody's negative past is going to reflect on what your situation is going to be. And quite honestly, you might just meet the perfect realtor and you'll never use another realtor again. And that's what I'm hoping when you come and see me at least. So uh, you guys have a great week and I'll see you next Thursday. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. What about you, Carol? Um, I was just thinking about this. My top tip this week is as a consumer looking for a mortgage, do not compare your scenario or your situation with Uncle Harry's or my neighbor Sally next door or my coworker because this is not a cookie cutter business. Um, every single individual that's getting a mortgage their situation is totally different from the person standing next to them or 10 feet behind them. Um, so I get calls all the time. Well, such and such got this deal and that deal or this rate or that rate. It doesn't matter. You cannot compare. So that's my top tip is talk to your local lender and get your scenario and your situation that meets your needs. Love it. Love it. Dana? Hi, Dana Manenti, Guaranteed Rate Affinity. Um, my top tip is to be proactive and not reactive when you are getting your documents for a pre-approval and for the application. Provide as much as you possibly can up front. If the lender or the processor asks you for a document, uh, try and get it as soon as possible because it is very important and the the more information we have up front, the smoother it'll be at the end. Love it. Love it. Cody, what about you? My top tip would be to please, please, please do not circumvent your realtor. We do this every day. We know who to, we, we know how to navigate the challenges. Let me put it that way. So um, we can make it a lot easier for you. So just don't circumvent us. Let us guide you. We got you. 
and it will be okay. <laughs> Every little thing is going to be okay. <laughs> right? Um, my top tip of the week is just going to be communication. Um, I know I've said this in a past week, but communication is key. Always have an open line of communication. Be, be by your phone. If you are buying a house, you should have your phone on you. Well, we all have our phones on us 24-7, right? I mean, who's kidding anybody? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if your phone's there, answer it. Like, whether, it, if, especially if in the real estate transaction, because if it could be us, like it could be the, uh, the title company calling you and you may not have our number saved, which, you know, answer every phone call in that time frame that you are in the real estate transaction. So that is my top tip of the week. And Michelle, as our special guest, do you want to share a top tip? I do. And I actually have a special guest with me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who could that be? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Is that Hello. Max? Max. So Max and I, want to share one thing, trust your professionals, okay? We know what we're doing. Um, some of us have been in the business a really long time. I've been in it almost 30 years. Carol, I know you've been in it almost as much as me, if not longer. Longer, dear. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, we know we do know what we're doing. I, pr I promise you, when we call and you ask you for something, trust me, there's a good reason. We're happy to talk to you about it. Always happy to have a conversation. But there is always a reason behind the things we ask for. So that would be my tip today. I love that. And thank you for the special guest. I mean, Max, what a handsome yeah. man over there. He saw, the, he saw the treats on my desk. So, of course, he took off after he got a hold of them. All right. Does anybody have any announcements that they would like to say for the next week? No? Okay. Uh, well, guys. Oh. My dog open out 1061 Southwest Gardens Avenue, open out Saturday. I'll be there. Be there. Be Come see me. Be there. Where's that, Cody? 1061 Southwest Gardens Boulevard, Bomb City. Saturday, Saturday and we'll Sunday. So Cody will be there on Saturday, and uh, Dave will be there on Sunday. Cool. It's yeah. a beautiful home. It is. It's going to go favorite. now. We had a, a huge price adjustment. We are getting a lot of activity on that property. It's going to go. Okay. Thank you. Well, guys, you guys heard it here. And we, again, do this every Thursday at 2 p.m. And we encourage you to come and join us on live and hear about these different topics because every week we have a new topic that we go over. So this week, if you're tuning in just now, was common challenges and their solutions. And we hashed out a bunch of them so thank you so much for joining and we hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week and thank you for everyone who has comes on here every single week you guys are fantastic and the knowledge that you guys provide is just amazing I, you, you blow me away for every week <laughs> yeah guys thank you so much i, I watch you every week it's just fabulous just fa my aunt okay who is retired watches this every week just so you know Oh, wow. oh. So I give a shout out to Aunt Phyllis. <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.